Move down. Take David will be here. No big deal. <laughs> Okay, it's, um, are we ready, Courtney? All right, 6.02 p.m. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Roll call, please. Lanier. Here. Lesnar. Rouse. Here. Lee Here. Here. And we, a quorum is present. First topic on our agenda tonight is audience comments. I believe we have one parent who signed up for audience comments. Come on up. Just come on up and, okay. <laughs> and comments. Hi, Welcome. Oh, hi. Thank you. So um, I have a couple, just two questions for you all. One of them I think is more uh, Dr. Smith, like more directed at you, and one is directed more towards the board. So what for the first name? question. Can we have your name, please? Oh, sure. My name's April Andrew Rahman, a parent of kids who are at Western and Parker now. But um, So the first question is related to the strategic plan, and actually both of the questions are related to the strategic plan, but um, saw some of the phenomenal work you all did last time in that presentation with the strategic plan, and was wondering, um, so we have this mission of serving all students. As someone who's kind of like new to this and new to the board meetings and things like that, was wondering who are the specific groups of students who fall into the students who are in need of being served? And thinking about, like for example, would that be, um, like I've, I've dove into the Illinois report card data a little bit and saw like, would that be, for example, like black students, students with IEPs, those are two of the groups that kind of stood out. And with those being the two groups, or if those are the two groups, if there are other groups, um, how are we accounting for those groups in particular in determining um, what type of, like what are we actually doing for those groups in particular within the context of the strategic plan to ensure that those specific groups of students are being served? So that's the first question. Okay. Okay, ready for me. All right, and then question number two, this is more a question for the board. So this is also about the strategic plan and looking at the physical plan improvements that are proposed. So, um, and me being a parent, you know, it's, there's different metrics as far as like, what you all know as far as being educators and insiders to the finances that are you know, within the district, and then as parents. So there's a perception among parents, at least, that Western Avenue in particular and Parker are schools that receive more resources. So then in looking at this, and I'm a Western Avenue parent, just putting that up front, but um, looking at the strategic plan, it also seemed as if those, those um, schools were also some of the ones that were top of the list again of receiving resources and I was wondering if you know in accordance with the strategic plan we're trying to ensure this equitable resource distribution among schools like how and, and this is like thinking about the board we had this beautiful work um, of consensus which like I'm all about in determining what were the things that needed to be prioritized among the district right so then in when you all are making the decisions about you know which of these plans given the limited funds that we have then we're going to prioritize like how are we accounting for for that kind of it almost seems like um, it may be an imbalance and again this is just from parent perception I don't know if that actually is the case from what I'm hearing and um, was just like getting more insider information with Western, you know, not receiving some of the, uh, the Title IX fund or Title, uh, Title I funds like 
it's not necessarily may be the case, you know? But just thinking about that, like how are we ensuring that equitable resource distribution when it comes time for you all to like make the decision about which of the projects we are actually gonna move forward? So those are the two questions that I had for you all. Absolutely. All right, thank you, appreciate you. Is it okay if I reach out to you in the morning and we'll schedule Absolutely. some? Absolutely, okay. yeah. All right, Ms. Rockman, thank you so much for coming tonight. Yeah, thank you. And I think on behalf of the board, while most of that, those questions are for Dr. Smith on the the process for figuring out where the long-term planning goes in terms of capital. There's been a committee working on that, comprised members of the community for many months. They brought a recommendation to the board. I am certain that the topics you've raised will be part of live discussion here before we make any decisions. So um, all of those things, and everything you brought up are things that have um, been brought up in prior meetings and, and we'll continue to address it as a board as a whole. Today, though, not on the agenda today, and also we're missing a couple board members. So, I'll follow up with you in the morning. Thank you so much. All right. Next up, we have uh, Dr. Smith's report. Absolutely. Well, good, e good evening, everyone. Per certainly the people in the audience, but everyone who's streaming at home as well. Summer's officially up and running in District 161. We can finally say that. We're into that that second week of Summer Academy, and so we know that it's for real. But you know, having been in the building, I know that the students are smiling, the teachers are working hard. We have so many kids at Summer Academy. It truly feels like it's just an extension of the school year, which is really what we were looking for. We were looking for an opportunity to extend learning for any number of kids, whether it was for catch-up growth or just for enrichment. I think we've accomplished that. I know that the teachers are working hard. Um, Avita McNeil and Pam Panazzo, the two administrators there, have been working nonstop. And certainly with Ms. Crawford's guidance, they've, they've really done a, a nice job getting Summer Academy off the ground. Now we transition from making sure that all the kids who came to Summer Academy got home from Summer Academy. We can focus on the instruction that's happening in those classrooms and just kind of turn the dial on those expectations because we really do need to see growth coming out of Summer Academy. It's great that we can offer it but we want to make sure that we're providing learning opportunities for all these children as they're moving forward. On the operations and maintenance side, we can finally say that the pre-K playground at Flossmoor Hills is in. Um, it has been a long time coming, but it's open for use. It is fenced, but that fence is open. It's just uh, part of the, the pre-K uh, requirements. I'm very, very thankful, not only to the State Board for helping us secure the funds, but to Fran LaBella, and Scott Stashak, uh, Haley Marty, Jackie Janicki, everyone who helped us really conceptualize the opportunity to put in a new playground, to use the funds differently, and we brought it to reality. And so now we have another opportunity for our youngest learners at Flossmoor Hills to play on you know, equipment that, that's their size, that's, that's developmentally appropriate, and we're moving forward there, so we're really excited. The other playground projects have not started yet. We want to make sure that we see the actual materials before we start to dig up anything on the campuses just with the supply chain issues that we've had, we think that's the safest way to move forward. But we have started on the, all the asphalt projects, and I feel like every little piece of good news may have a little bit of bitter on the back end of it, but we started on the asphalt projects, and we ran into an issue with a limestone quarry in, uh, strike in Thornton. And so since that provides the bedrock for the playgrounds and all of those pieces, those projects have been put on hold. I know that the village is experiencing something very similar with their, their drainage projects that they're working on. So hopefully that gets resolved here in the next week or two and those asphalt projects can continue. So once we get some additional information, you know, Scott can keep, keep us updated and or, or we can reach out to Wold as well. But that's one thing that we're looking at moving forward. Looking forward, District 161 will be closed this Monday on June 20th to celebrate the Juneteenth holiday. So Summer Academy re will resume next week on Tuesday, June 21st. Uh, the following Tuesday, June 28th, the district will be open, but Summer Academy will also be closed uh, since Parker is going to be used uh, as a polling place uh, for the elections. We certainly appreciate the flexibility of the students and the staff and the parents, um, but those are two schedule changes to look out for over the next coming weeks. That's the end of my report. Thank you. Thank you. So a few action items on the agenda. The first up is a resolution honoring Dr. Von Mansfield. Yes, I'll come around. Come around the front for me. Good, how are you? You can stay seated as long as so long. 
Uh, it was really important to all of us in District 161 that we take a moment to recognize your incredible career. Um, there's a ton on this paper, but it certainly, in my estimation, barely you know, scrapes the surface of what you mean to the people in this room and the countless generations of kids that have gone through our community. So whereas on the 13th day of June 2022, the members of the Flossmoor School District 161 Board of Education wish to congratulate Dr. Vaughn Mansfield on the occasion of his retirement as superintendent of Homewood Flossmoor Community School District, two, uh, District 233. And whereas Dr. Mansfield was raised in Milwaukee, Wisconsin and completed high school at the University School of Milwaukee, which is one of the top preparatory high schools in the country. Dr. Mansfield received his Bachelor of Science in Education and his Master of Science in Counselor Education by, and Counseling Psychology from the University of Wisconsin, Madison. Dr. Mansfield also received a Master of Arts in Administration from Governor State University in University Park, Illinois and a doctorate in curriculum and instruction from Loyola University in Chicago, Illinois. And whereas, prior to Dr. Mansfield's education career, he played football at the collegiate and professional levels, Dr. Mansfield was drafted by the Atlanta Falcons and played five years of professional football, spending the majority of his career as a defensive back and kick returner for the Philadelphia Eagles and the Green Bay Packers. And whereas, Dr. Mansfield has served as a high school science teacher, coach, guidance counselor, dean of students, assistant principal, and principal. Dr. Mansfield currently serves as a superintendent of Homewood Flossmoor Community High School District 233, which is a school with an enrollment of approximately 3,000 students and is located in Flossmoor, Illinois. During his tenure, Homewood Flossmoor High School has been recognized as a three-time National Blue Ribbon award-winning high school, received an exemplary ranking by the College Board for having one of the best AP psychology programs in the country, ranked as one of the most challenging high schools in America by the Washington Post, and maintained a balanced budget for the past 15 years. And whereas Dr. Mansfield has served in leadership roles at the state and national levels, including serving as a college board trustee and a member of the college board executive committee. Dr. Mansfield also chaired the uh, college board trustee committee on membership, which represents more than 6,000 members uh, to include universities, colleges, high schools, and non-for-profit organizations, both nationally and internationally. In addition, Dr. Mansfield has held the position of president of the Headmasters Association, which represents the top private and public schools in the nation. And whereas Dr. Mansfield has received numerous honors and awards throughout his uh, college and professional careers, Dr. Mansfield's educational honors include receiving the Paul Harris Fellow Award from the Rotary Foundation of Rotary International, the Meritorious Service Award from the Illinois State Board of Education's Those Who Excel program in 2020, the Award of Excellence from the Illinois State Board of Education's Those Who Excel program in 2005, and the Charles Gavin Image Award for Education. As an athlete, Dr. Mansfield received recognition as a participant in the Senior Bowl as a senior, honorable mention as a junior for the All Big Ten, the Russ Winnie Award for Leadership and Academic Achievement as a football player at the University of Wisconsin, and Dr. Mansfield was selected by the Wisconsin Alumni Association as the outstanding student athlete as a senior. Therefore, be it resolved by the Flossmoor School District 161 Board of Education that we recognize Dr. Von Mansfield for his commitment to education and to the Homewood Flossmoor Consolidated School District 233 community, congratulate him on his retirement, and wish him only the best in his future endeavors. Congratulations, Vaughn. I'll just say a few words, and thank you for crunching 30 years into about three minutes. Um, first of all, thank you so very much, Dana, for, for the recognition, and to the Board of Education here. I know how challenging your job is, and for all the money that you make, we'll double that pay, as always said. Uh, but the time and energy and the commitment is so very important for, for all of our students. And we've received great students from District 161, and I look forward to that continuing, even if I'm not here. You do have Dr. Smith and a great district office staff who I've worked with for a number of years, so I don't see that changing. And we're going to turn you over to a wonderful board, one of my board members here, Cynthia Turnquist. Um, yeah, give her 
and how that <laughs> works, uh, is also committed to moving forward with what it means to, to be a community district in the uh, Flossmore area. So that's all I really have. You know, I have something else to run to, but um, in terms of the recognition for the brief moment of time, I'll take it, fully accept it, appreciate it, and I'll look forward to moving into the future and anything that I can do for you in the future, I certainly will. So again, thank you so, so very much for, for this honor. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Thank you both for coming. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next on our agenda, we have our tentative 2022-2023 budget, a topic I know everybody has been dying to hear about. Yeah, we didn't. Oh. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, sorry. So moved. Second. I am Any? not being loud. This thing is very sensitive tonight. That's okay. I'm loud, but I'm not that loud. The community appreciates it. <laughs> Any discussion on the motion? Roll call, please. Rouse? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Please, John? Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> Great. Next, we have the 2022-2023 budget. Yeah, just so we a have a sellout crowd. Just need a motion to approve. All so right. moved. Wait, I think he has to say it. <laughs> but right. I appreciate your excitement. We have a motion to approve the tentative 2022-23 budget. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Rouse. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Lee yes. Nelson. Yes. The motion passes. Fran, it's all yours. <laughs> no, I'm saying go. <laughs> Next up, we have the bills for the month of June. Ms. Yep, and thank you, Fran, for answering my questions. I reviewed the bills for the month of June and will make a motion to approve the bills for the month of June in the amount of $1,104,549.80. Second. Roll call, please. Please, John. Yes. Sharon. Yes. 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 Nelson. Yes. The motion passes. Next up, we have our IT security structure upgrade. We have a motion to approve the contract with Net56 for IT infrastructure upgrades at a cost of $52,181.85. So moved. Second. Just one additional item on that. Uh, we did follow up with the high school about an opportunity to share some services here. I think there's an opportunity it's just going to take more groundwork. They do work with the software solutions that we're recommending. I'm just not sure about their capacity to manage it for us. So what I would request is we move forward with Net56. This is an annual contract, but I've already been in contact with Dr. Mansfield and, the, and uh, Dr. Wakeley and their tech department about opportunities for them to manage that moving forward. I think they're looking for just some additional information and what our commitment would be on the finance side and personnel side. So I think there's an opportunity there. Um, I just don't know if it's gonna happen quickly enough for us to move forward for the 22-23 school year. Any other questions? Roll call, please. Yes. 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 Nelson. Yes. Motion passes. Next, may I have a motion to approve the consolidated district plan for the 2022-2023 school year? So moved. Second. <laughs> Roll call, please. Lisa? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Rouse? Yes. Nelson? Yes. The motion passes. Next, may I have a motion to approve the hiring of an additional social worker for the 2022-2023 school year? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Rouse? Yes. 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 Nelson. Yes. The motion passes. Next, may I have a motion to approve a one-time $150 completion bonus for eligible employees that complete their mandated training in accordance with District 161 policy? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. please John. Yes. Rouse? Yes. Sharon? Yes. Yes, motion passes. 
And then we have our consent agenda. May I have a motion to approve the consent agenda, including personnel report 22-020, payroll for the month of May, minutes for the minutes of the May 9th and May 25th, 2022 executive sessions, the physical restraint timeout and isolated timeout reduction plan, the excess equipment disposal request, the sub nurse rate adjustment, the 2022-2023 hearing officers, the nurse tuition reimbursement, the serendipity yoga contract, the minds empowered counseling agency contract, the purchase of verbal intervention from the crisis prevention institute, and the purchase of the second step social emotional learning for program for adults. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Rose. Yes. Sharon. Yes. Lisa. Yes. Nelson. Yes. The motion passes. And that concludes our public we, we, session agenda. Uh, we do have an executive session um, to discuss matters relating to collective bargaining under 5 ILCS 120 slash 2. We do not expect to take any action after executive session. And so for those of you who have come here in this month of June, we appreciate it, but we will not be doing anything else when we return. All set. Okay, so we have a motion to adjourn to executive session. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed. Thank you. Great. Thank you, everybody. Have a great night. Ms. Rockman, I'll talk to you in the morning, okay? Just Eric and Fran.